It's now time for Mark Hankins. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Welcome to the program today. We're bringing a message from the Word of God that has changed my life and uh, changed millions of people's lives. And we're going to talk about the subject of faith, how faith works and where faith comes from, the fundamentals of faith. Uh, my life was changed as a 17-year-old. My dad was pastoring in South Texas, my dad and my mom. And we grew up there in the church and knew a lot of Bible stories. Mm -hmm. I mean, we studied the Bible and we knew all the Bible stories, a lot of doctrines, you know, and a lot of good stories. But... Dad Hagen came to my dad's church when I was 17 years old, Kenneth E. Hagen. Wow, and when he came to my dad's church, I mean, uh, he was, you know, older guy, not, not so cool dressing, didn't look so cool, but he came and he began to teach on faith and how faith works. And for some reason, at 17, I listened to every word, studied every book, listened to every tape, because I wanted to understand how faith works. And so we have this up in our office and it says, go and teach my people faith and Kenneth E. Hagen there. So dad Hagen taught on the subject of faith for probably over 65 years or something like that. And he said that was his mandate, his assignment. And so in following him, we just decided to do the same thing. And so listening to him teach on the subject of faith uh, turned our lives around. It was such a captivating message, wasn't it? I, just, I remember when I was, I was about 17, 16 or 17, and someone gave us the tape, The Authority of the Believer mm -hmm. by Brother Hagin, and I'd never heard this man before. And he told about how mm -hmm. he had been healed as a teenager, 16 years old, uh, from seven, how many, seven incurable diseases, mm -hmm by the message of faith. By the word. It just came right off of the pages of the Bible of all things. Yeah. <laughs> Mark 11, 23, Mark 11, 24, and it changed his life, yeah. saved his life. He came up off the bed mm. uh, after being paralyzed for months yeah. and he began to walk and he never went back into that wow. situation ever again. Yeah, so thanks, so for, that's, that's thanks for joining us that. today, and we're going to get right into this Amen. subject. So Mark eleven twenty two. I mean, look at that verse. And Mark eleven twenty two, 22, uh, Jesus said, have faith in God. When Jesus said to have faith in God, other translations say, have the faith of God or the God kind of faith. One of my favorite translations says, lay hold on God's faithfulness. So living by faith is simply understanding the faithfulness of God. He's faithful to his word. He watches his word. He is faithful, dependable, reliable, unchanging. And so to have faith in God, we lay hold of God's faithfulness. Then look at Mark eleven twenty three 23, because in Mark eleven twenty three, 23 is where Jesus says, have faith in God. And then he says in verse 23, he tells you exactly how faith works. Jesus would have to be an expert on the subject of faith. We know that 1 John 5, 4 says that faith is the victory that overcomes the world. So Jesus said, I'm going to show you how faith works so you can win in every situation of your life. So in Mark eleven twenty three, 23, he says, Verily I send you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. 
Well, if you want to go into verse 24, whatever you desire when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. I mean, at 17 years old, uh, this explanation of faith literally changed my life. And the words of Jesus are so simple and so clear. And he starts off by saying, whosoever, which means this will work for anybody and it will work on whatsoever anything. So I thought, wow, if I could understand how faith works and if I could learn how to live by faith, I could just win in every area of life. I like how it says whosoever. I like how you say whosoever shall have whatsoever. And I remember years ago you used to say anybody can. Uh, anybody. Anybody can. Mm -hmm. Everybody won't. Everybody will. But somebody will. Somebody will. will. <laughs> <laughs> that's a whosoever. And it says whosoever. That's us. That's you. You are a whosoever. And uh, that means you can listen to this message today and say, okay, I'm going to apply this mm -hmm. specific message. God's talking to you out of his word. And it's alive and powerful. And you are the whosoever we're talking to. And yeah. whatsoever you say, it'll move anything. Yeah. Four times the Bible says the mm -hmm. just shall live by faith. Four times the just shall live by faith. And four times it says God is no respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. That means if he did it for anybody, That's he right. will do it for you. And so when you study faith and how faith works, we also call this the authority of the believer. In other words, when you're a believer, you are not a victim of just whatever comes around in this world. You have authority as a believer. The Lord told me one time, he said, the authority of the believer is not just available as an accessory it is actually necessary for every believer to know their authority, to exercise their authority, and literally to use their faith and to live by faith. So Jesus said, whosoever shall say. So I just got amazed at what Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty three 23 on the saying part of faith. Mm -hmm. He said, whosoever shall say, mm -hmm. Under this mountain, again, he's talking about the authority of the believer. In other words, your words will give you authority over things that look impossible, immovable. Your words literally give you authority over devils and demons and evil spirits. So you as a believer have authority, but you must speak whosoever shall say. So if your faith is not strong enough to move your mouth, it'll never move a mountain. And so the first thing you do as a believer Living by faith is to say, your faith must have a voice. Ooh, <laughs> and that's a voice of faith. Yeah. Jesus is our example, and I'm so glad we have a clear example to follow. Here in uh, Luke, the fourth chapter, you were talking about speaking to devils, speaking to Authority. the enemy. We have an enemy. He comes to steal, kill, and to destroy us. And so we need to know how to overcome. Mm -hmm. And Jesus in Luke, the fourth chapter, gives us such a vivid mm -hmm. illustration on how to overcome the mm -hmm. devil with words. Because yeah. the enemy comes, he comes to your mind with thoughts, yeah. Yeah. and uh, he can quote the word. He can sound very religious. And uh, so three times Jesus said, to the devil, when the devil tempted uh, him, it is he written. said, it is written, <laughs> and like it that. is written. And then the last time that the enemy came with a thought, yeah. with a scripture, twist that scripture, try to trap Tempt Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Jesus said, I like how he took it up a notch. He said, it is spoken, it is, it is said. said. Yeah. So it was not only written, but Jesus said, now I'm saying it, uh, I, when I say it, yeah. it's like God talking to you, get out of here. <laughs> so he resisted the devil by With speaking the mm -hmm. word. And so you can see the authority that you and I have as believers in the speaking part are the saying part. Actually, if you'll study Mark 11:23, 23, we learned from Dad Hagen 
that, and, and really he learned it from Jesus. Jesus told him in Mark 11, 23, we're using the King James Version, which was what he was using. And he said, did you ever notice that the speaking or the saying part of faith is in Mark 11, 23, three times, and the believing part is only in there once? Actually, there's a picture of Dad Hagen, you know, holding his fingers up like that, teaching, and that the saying part, say, 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 and the believing part, once. And so we, we know that faith is believing, but it's not enough just to be a believer. The speaking part or the saying part, the, the voice of the believer, mm -hmm. the sound of faith actually affects and influences the unseen realm as well as the seen. It does. And I like how Mark 11, 23 comes from Mark 11, 22, where Jesus was telling his disciples to have yeah. faith in God or have faith the mm -hmm. God kind of faith. And yeah. then he described it. He says, for verily I say to you, get ready. Whenever you hear Jesus say, verily I say to you, he's getting ready to mm -hmm. unload something that works the same for anyone. It's a principle of faith here. And he says, so you speak and get ready. Mm -hmm. Listen. <laughs> and you said, he said, the word say three times. Yeah. Whosoever shall, shall say, say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, mm. shall believe that right there, believe in the heart. Yeah. That those things which he saith, so there's an action that in yeah. the heart, the faith is in your heart, yeah. but you're working with your mouth. Your act, your act of faith at yes. this point is strictly the speaking part. Yeah. So speaking is the initial act of faith. When you first get up in the morning and you want your faith to be activated, then you say, you actually speak the word of God or you say what God says about you. In other words, it's great, you know, you're listening and you're thinking and you may be silent, but the authority starts when you speak. When you speak. And so I like to say it this way, that the Word of God is a spoken thing. Yeah. It came out of God's mouth. It didn't come out of God's pen. It says it came out of His mouth, that it was spoken before it was written, and it was written so it could be spoken. In other words, wow. you take the Word and put it in your mouth, and I call that mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation from God. In other words, when you feel like you're going to pass out, you take the Word, and inhale, breathe in right. the faith of God and the life of God. And then when you speak, the sound of your voice literally carries the God kind of faith. And so your speaking has the authority to move mountains. Mm. And the Lord told me one time, he said, if you knew what was on the other side of your mountain, you would move it. <laughs> In other words, uh, the enemy throws mountains and impossibilities and challenges in our way, but we don't have to be a victim. We have authority as a believer to say to the mountain, you must be removed. So the Lord said it to me this way one time. He said, your mountain needs to hear your voice. And I thought, wow. So you go to church, you hear the preacher's voice. He said, but your mountain needs to hear your voice. The authority is in your voice. And so to have faith in God, then you must speak, say, or use your voice. Do not be silent. Open your mouth. When should that start in your life? Well, one of my favorite verses is in Psalms chapter 5 and in verse 3, I think it is. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 3. And um, Psalms 5 and verse 3 says, My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee, and I will look up. In other words, my expectation is on God. And then it says, And my voice shalt thou hear in the morning. So now your voice comes up before God. And I like to say your voice is your address. Your voice comes up before God. 
When should that start? He said, in the morning, Lord, I lift up my voice unto you. You are my God. You're my Father God. And I lift up my voice. In other words, I'm not going to be silent about my faith in God and my expectation in God. That means when you get up in the morning to kind of roaming around or getting coffee or something, the moment you open your mouth, is when your faith is now engaged in running your life, not your feelings, not your circumstances, but your faith in God. That's where your victory is. So you have to open your mouth. I, Lord, I lift up my voice unto you. You could say something like Psalm 63, which is one of my favorite Psalms. It says, Oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsts for thee. Early in the morning will I lift up my voice to thee. So you lift up your voice, speaking words of faith right out of the word of God. And you lift up your voice. When do you start that? In the morning. That's where your victory is going. Uh, first thing in the morning, I will lift up my voice. Actually, he says it again over here in Psalm 55, 17. And Psalm 55, 17, I don't know if you can beat me there, but I'm going to find it here. Sword drill. Psalm 55, 17 says, Evening and morning yes. and at noon will I pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. So, for <laughs> him to hear your voice my and to voice. do anything for you must mean that we can initiate the hand of God. We can initiate mm -hmm. his miracle power that he wants to release in your behalf, but when you open up your mouth, then he can. You give him permission just to step mm. right in. Praise my God. Voice. My voice. Shall you hear in the morning, oh God, my expectations upon thee. So it's not enough, you know, just to be sitting there silent. Oh, that's all right sometimes, I guess. But here he says, I lift up my voice. This is my identity and this is my address. This is where I am. So the scripture we always use is in the book of Acts where the apostle Paul lifted up his voice. Acts 16. Yeah, when Paul and Silas were in yeah. prison, they lifted up their voice to God. They began to sing praises to God and the power of God shook the whole prison. And all the doors came open, man. I'm telling you, it's powerful when you lift up your voice and begin to magnify the Lord. It's amazing. And so he, at midnight yes. that happened, when the, the darkest time and the most pain and the most struggle, and they lifted up their voice. You know, you say uh, everybody needs a faith friend. Yeah. And there was two of them there. Two of them. There's such power when you get together with another believer that mm. knows how to lift their voice up and you yeah. begin to lift your voice in praise or speaking the word or encouraging one another. You begin to magnify the Lord. And that is like, a, I think Phil Driscoll said it, it's like magnetism that causes the power of God to fall and explode in your life. Yeah. And that's what Paul and Silas did. That was words of faith. They're believers. Mm -hmm. And when believers, whatever you believe, you begin to speak what you mm -hmm. believe. They begin to worship and praise. I think worship and praise is some of the easiest ways yeah. that you can release your faith, release your faith in yeah. God, and see the hand of God just move yeah. right every, right there where you are. All right, so let's look at this from Mark eleven twenty three. Here the authority go. of the believer, that whosoever shall say, I love Smith Wigglesworth, his little book called Ever Increasing Faith, and Smith Wigglesworth said, any one can be changed by faith, no matter how they may be fettered or bound. Mm -hmm. In other words, Wigglesworth, uh, a mighty man of faith, and uh, he said, any person can be changed by faith, no matter how they may be bound. In other words, there's different ways that the enemy comes into people's lives and tries to bind them or limit them or, or oppress them. But Wigglesworth said, any person can be changed by faith, no matter how they may be bound. That means Satan cannot make a bondage that your faith cannot break off of you. Ooh. When you have faith in yeah. God, now chains are breaking and limitations are taken off of you and you can go into new blessing and new territory. So the speaking or the saying part of faith is essential to faith. 
So you can go from Mark 11, 23, where Jesus said, say, say, <laughs> say. Yeah. He said, he shall have whatsoever he saith. <laughs> Amen. So you don't have what other people say, but you will have what you say. And so the importance of your saying or your speaking, not just at church, but when you're in your truck or your car or when you're at home and you begin to lift up your voice and you begin to say what God says about you, you begin to say the power of the blood of Jesus, that it cleanses you and redeems you and blesses you and resists the devil with those kind of words. The saying part of faith is essential to faith. So if you're silent, you will lose by default. In other words, you're going to have to move your mouth, which is the initial act of faith. Somehow this makes me think of the language of faith. When you say, he says, you know, if I speak to somebody, try mm -hmm. to speak to them in Spanish, I want to use the things that they say. Those are the words. That's how you say it. And this is the language how God speaks. Mm -hmm. This is how mountains are moved. So we can yeah. say, we can have what we say yeah. in his language of yeah. faith. And so when we speak the word of God, my mom was such a great example of speaking the word of God and she would just mm -hmm. magnify the Lord in song or Psalms. And then she would uh, praise God for his promises mm -hmm. and for his faithfulness to his promise. And uh, she just began to start her day like that saying what God says, yeah. speaking, what are you doing? You're speaking the language of faith. Yeah. And that's what God understands. You get on yeah. his level, his language. That the Bible is the language of faith. And so the speaking or the saying part. So you're basically learning a new language. A new language. <laughs> <laughs> so whatever kind of language or culture or wherever you come from, you have to learn the language of the word, which is the call, the word of faith. <laughs> Paul called it the word of faith. So you're learning a new language. You're learning to talk a new way and uh, learning how to live by faith. I love what Brother Kenneth Copeland said one time. He said when he first met Oral Roberts, he said, uh, he's the first man that I ever met that used his faith on, on purpose. purpose. Mm -hmm. In other words, learning to live by faith literally means that you can frame your future and frame your world with mm -hmm. your own words. In other words, it's not just how you're going to get to heaven. Thank God we confess Jesus is our Lord and we're saved by the blood of Jesus. But it's not just how you're going to get to heaven. It's how you're going to overcome this world. This is the victory that overcomes right. this world. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to wait till you get to heaven to be blessed and win and to have victory. Learning how to live by faith. I think it's one of the first things our children were born and when they were little, the first thing I began to drill into them and they're probably two years old or something, three years old is learning how to live by faith. And sometimes they would say certain things and I say, no, we don't talk that way. Here's the way we talk. We take the word of God and we speak God's word because we're learning how to live by faith. Amen. And the great thing about it is the Bible says in second Thessalonians, your faith grows exceedingly. So you can actually get better at it. You can go further and receive more from God as your faith is increased and as you grow in faith. So the speaking part of faith, the saying part, Dad Hagen said it this way. I thought it's phenomenal. He said, the saying part of faith is so important that you can actually school yourself into faith with your own words. Think about that. In other words, when you're living by faith or you're having challenges in your life, you can school yourself in to the place of faith, living by faith with your own 
words. No matter how things look, you take the word of God and put it in your mouth and you just agree with God. Somebody said, well, that, that, that don't look like that's true. That might be a lie. Not if you're agreeing with God because God can't God's lie. God's not a liar. <laughs> so, so the same part is essential to your faith. So I encourage you today to take the word of God and don't just think about it. That's good. But put that word Amen. in your mouth and begin to say, Amen. he said in the morning, first thing in the morning, at noon and in the evening, I will lift up my voice. Imagine God must love hearing your voice, the voice of faith, Amen. somebody that believes. It is that faith that pleases God. So God bless you today as we've studied the message of faith. I trust it's a blessing to you. We have one of our books here called Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, Believing and Speaking. It's one of our favorite books. We would like for you to order this book. The announcer will come up in just a moment. And so you get this book on faith, study it, and you get to be a professional at faith and you grow in faith. And also, if you're not a partner with Mark Hankins Ministries, uh, Trina and I would love to have you become a partner because when you become a monthly partner, you're giving whatever it is, large or small, your monthly partnership with us helps us to distribute the word internationally all over the world. And so thank you for considering that. Pray about that and become a monthly partner. And we thank God for you. And here's the announcer to tell you how to order the new book. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Anytime God wants to change someone's life, he touches their mouth. One act of faith will open up the supernatural and cause the glory of God to come in. When you hold fast to your confession of faith, you are connected to Jesus' victory. In this book, Faith Opens the Door to the Supernatural, you will learn how believing and speaking opens the door to the supernatural in your life. God has given every believer a measure of overcoming faith. The spirit of faith will take the victim out of your voice and put victory in your voice. It doesn't matter what you may be going through, failure is not an option. With Pastor Mark's brand new book, Feed Your Faith, this book is full of quotes that will feed your faith on these topics. Faith, confession, in Christ, righteousness, the Holy Spirit, the love and joy of God, and much more. You will learn to walk in victory every day. Here at Mark Hankins Ministries, we believe we are called to train and equip believers all over the world. This is why our vision is to translate our books into more than 100 languages. Your gift of any amount will not only help us translate books into many languages, but also to complete our new Mark Hankins Ministries Conference Center. The Conference Center will help us distribute the word more effectively through conferences and will also serve as our new television studio. Visit MarkHankins.org or call 318-767-2001 and join us in partnership to carry the message of faith around the world. Thank you, World Missions Partners. Together we can, together we will. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today. We trust that you were blessed and you were encouraged. And you know, my dad always brings a challenging word to challenge your faith and your belief. We want to get this word to you and we want to get faith opens the door to the supernatural to your home and to your life and into your heart. So for your gift of any amount, we can get this book to you. But I want you to know where your gift is going toward. It is going toward completing the Mark Hankins Ministry Conference Center. So this is a huge investment for us and for you. So thank you for going on there, ordering the book. We want it to be a blessing to you. Thank you for joining us again today. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Have a great day. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org.